sense that your first film I really, really loved and I felt like it was very, very feminist. And maybe this is just another question that it can't be answered, but I had a really hard time with the, the idea that this, this woman would like just kind of fall into the arms of this man who literally has eaten her arm and her leg. And I just, like, I really grapple with that because first it's like the woman in peril scene that we've all seen like a lot of times and then it's like, wait a minute, no. And maybe that's the whole thing with like Stephen King. And is this Christ. a question? Yeah, but yeah, why, why would she do that? Like, is it just some statement about the insanity of the- Do you understand everything that's happening in this world that we live in right now? No, but it is pretty insane. But I'm just curious from an artistic perspective. No, no, I just am answering your question right now for you. No, that I is my I'm answer, is that, the, is that for me, for me, there's a lot of heinous, unexplainable chaos and decision making in the world that we live in. And I, I can't, I don't know exactly what the question is because you're just telling me I don't relate No, I'm to just her. saying, why, why was the decision made for her at the end when she recognizes that this man is evil and has literally eaten her arm and her leg to fall? Yeah, she, she makes a statement and says, you're evil at one point in the movie. Because like you say something or feel it doesn't make it true. We all have feelings and for every single human, our feelings are true. That's the whole trick in, that's the whole point. That's the mind fuck about human existence. Right, but she says those words. She says those words and then she falls into his arms. That I just don't understand why you made that choice. To have her like fall in love with him. I don't know if she did fall in love. I don't know what you want me to say. It's like you seem so upset. Sorry that you're disappointed. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's okay uh, to be upset too. Sometimes good things happen when you get upset. Uh, I really enjoy this. I have like two quick questions. One, what was it like working with Neon? Like you're one of the first people to make a movie like with Neon. And then two, this is a weird time to ask, what's your biggest boner about now? What's your biggest boner? Yeah. I know who you are. <laughs> I, I saw you on Twitter. What's my biggest boner right now? <sighs> Neon is awesome, and it's just started, and we're just putting the movie out, and there's just like a, a brave and specific vision that they have and interests that they have in cinema, and it's rare. You know, you want easy answers, you want the Cheesecake Factory, it tastes a certain way, you go through on fucking cruise control and come out the other end, if you come out the other end with more questions than answers, I feel like I, that's kind of exciting. So Neon coming behind and supporting that. I think that what I just said was like residual from me yeah. thinking about what this woman that was up here was talking about. Um, I really want to like talk with you. You know, I think it's interesting when someone has a strong reaction, whatever it is. And I don't ever want to like dismiss or whatever. I'm just doing things and pulling things from deep inside, dark places in my soul, things that I believe and connect to. I don't always understand why, but I do believe that there's a deep truth in my own feeling about what I'm exploring, you know? I don't always have all the answers when I'm um, kind of bringing these things out. It's a risk. Hi. Hey, so I thought your movie was fucking dope. Um, really trippy flick. Uh, paper trails at the end, awesome, really tight. So like, um, 10 minutes in, I knew you were a burner. And I was just wondering, like, did you get any help in like the burner community to like raise money for the film or anything like that? Or, like, did you pitch did you that Burning Man or anything? No. It's like, I, how did Megan you raise that? Megan Allison gave me money. <laughs> what is that? Megan Allison. Megan Allison. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if, like, one stop you, shop. I was like, he like, he's like, he like, like make this like, weird like, ass movie. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Though. I love it. Yeah, cool, man. Hey, what's up? Um, a couple questions. Uh, one, are you wearing a bra? <laughs> it's, it's Twitter. No! 
Twitter thing. You guys are not, not you guys are not real fans. You're not a real fan. Um, question two. Uh, you made um, a big jump from like visually from uh, a girl walks home at night to now. You have colors, um, wide shots, everything. Uh, aside from like Mad Max, what was the visual inspiration for the uh, Bad Batch? The Bad Batch? Yeah, like movies that inspired you like visually, like how it looked, you know, how it kind of looks like Mad Max. Is there any other inspirations? Oh, one of, the, one, of the, one of the films was El Topo. Okay. Um, I really love the first hour. Of, have you seen El Topo? No. Oh my God! The first hour of El Topo is my favorite western, and I love a lot of western. It gets super weird in the second hour. I guess my phone goes too, though. Like, it's cool. But, um, it's it's cool, really cool, and he stars in it. And then, um, also, I think like Alice in Wonderland, and. Um, also, Gummo. Mm. One more Gummo question. Can I get Megan Ellison's number? Because, like, you know, I really have to do it. Uh, great movie. Thanks. Hey, um, how does uh, being a Persian influence your movies? Because you made A Girl Walks on the Lone and Night, and now you're doing the bad thing. So how, how, even going forward, how do you implement elements of the Persian culture? Well, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night is extremely like biopic for me. It's like, um, I'm as Iranian as that movie is. Um, I would say it's very, very, they're both very personal though. Um, the Bad Batch for me, this might sound strange, but it's really truly a love letter to America. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the I don't expect or believe that the things that I love need to be perfect. Um, I do love America. I'm an immigrant. Like I wouldn't have made either of those movies if my parents hadn't made this crazy trek from Iran to England to America to Miami to California. And so, like, you know, like Back to the Future Two. Oh no, one. I would disappear. Both. I would disappear out of the picture if they hadn't made all these choices. So like, yeah, The Bad Batch has that in it for me. Like, I feel like there's problems with the American dream. Um, but it's also what makes us ultimately magical and full of potential. I think for me, when I think of Bad Batch, especially considering that I wrote it three years ago before the current America that we're in, um, I think that the thing that like, because I saw my movie in a different way after January, and I thought, wow, like, that is what is ultimately so awesome about us, is that like Arlen, you can get cut down sometimes by each other and the system, but you can keep refusing to accept the comfort or the situation you're in. You can keep going out the hole and question the walls around you and look for more, even at whatever risk and without a certain expectation. That's what I feel like is truly awesome about America. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Fucking well. Okay. <laughs> so, do we have any uh, more questions? We have uh, a little bit of time. Anybody wants to come up to the microphone and ask anything? Or I'm what's, gonna... your, what's your next movie going to be? What's your next movie going to be? I'm shooting it in early 2018. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time for these things to get done. So. Can you tell us anything about it? Does it have Megan Ellison money behind it? No, 
<laughs> money. But like, um, you know, like when you have a crush on someone and you kind of want to stay cool about it so yes. you don't scare them away? Don't jinx That's it. what it's like before you make a movie. Exactly. Just don't talk about it. Exactly. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you guys so much for fucking sweating. Yeah. <laughs> And then for a second there, I was just like, but I hope you feel okay. I, I really hope that I didn't seem like, it's intense, you know, and I just, it's a lot. I, I would just ask you to imagine if you took off all your clothes and danced in front of a room full of people, what it might feel like to do that. That's how it is up here for me. In terms of like having your movie shown, or even just like oh, no talking right now, does it feel like no, that? Just like yeah, have like, your, to share exactly. your movie with the world to share your. For me, that's what it is. Yeah. Like I'm not making a movie about like bank robbers trying to just pull off a heist, which I would love, and I love that movie. I love that which one? Movie. I love Point Break. Point, yeah, Point I, I Break. Mean, there's a point Break, please. Like that, like. But please do I'm a Point just Break. Saying, like I was looking at, I'm looking at things, and like it feels like getting naked. I think we're. I think we're um, done. We've got a showing of a girl walks home alone at night coming right up after this at 9:45. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have one time for one more question. Yes. Oh, okay. sorry. I just, Thank you for asking. Yeah, sorry. Is this on? Yes. Okay. Hi. I uh, love the movie. Also, um, I'm nervous. So sorry if my voice is shaking. But I was wondering, do you feel like, um, like your film? I feel like is more. I see your films as like art films, and um, I don't know if you, that's like a given, but I feel like they're all films, and your films especially, kind of moving towards that kind of like those images and like kind of asking the viewer to kind of dig a little bit more internally um, to understand it. And so, do you think that there's a disconnect from what the general public? knows about art and seeing that as being kind of a roadblock for you creatively. Um, that your, your movies are coming from like art from movies and so forth. Mm -hmm. You see that there's a disconnect with people uh, seeing art as uh, <laughs> creative. I don't really know. I don't really think like, um, if I start thinking about what all y'all are gonna think, I'm not gonna take off my clothes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, in the act of just creating and being creative, I have to just kind of stay animated with myself. Like, I understand Arlen, I understand Miami Man, I understand the dream, I understand this world I'm building, and so like, that's my boner, and I follow that. And I just hope that maybe there's other people that have similar Boners, yeah. She's got a boner. And I don't think, I think there's something that might be a more like a massive, like a monsoon effect boner making, like Atomic Blonde, who's like, who doesn't have a boner about that? Wow. Have you guys seen the trailer for Atomic Blonde? Oh my God, shut it down, right? The guy can leave in the knees just thinking about it. But, um, but yeah, there's like, this is, I, there's some stuff in here that's, I guess, like different and weird and, but, hey man, there's lots of weird, different, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> or maybe you don't, you know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you.